All right, guys. It is a cold, dreary winter night here in late October. In the fall of 2020, we have a historic moment here at Collapse Chronicles. And I am Sam Mitchell, and this is my little dog, Sancho Panza. And it is our last night in Bugs in a Jar Farm as we get ready to head off to... Uh, the Point Lonesome Swamp at the end of our dirt road before my neighbors saw down the the trees over the road to keep Mad Max out. You know, Mad Max beginning in nine days. But before all that happens, I have one final chronicle of the collapse here for Sunday night, October 25th, 2020. And I cannot remember the Alert Tribes member who sent me this. Might have been Bill G again. I don't know. Anyway, I do appreciate all the doom and gloom. So, <clears throat> we're going to go back to 2004. I love uh, going, you know, looking back at former doomsday prophets, you know, making calls about the future to see how well they came out. So, this guy is actually, in 2004, he is looking ahead, not to 2020, but to 2030, the 2030 spike countdown to global catastrophe and this is by a fellow named colin mason uh colin mason who is colin mason we're going to find out who this man is he has done his homework uh colin mason is a senator in the australian federal parliament for nine years uh, he served on the Senate Standing Committee for Science and the Environment, the Select Committee on the Effects of Agent Orange, and the first delegation of the Australian Parliament to China. Uh, he has published 12 books, uh, including A Short History of Asia, so that's certainly part of any look ahead till 2030. So this is a whole book. I'm going to put the, uh, the link on here. This is an entire book. But we're going to go, uh, we're just going to read the opening chapter, Crisis Mode. Crisis Mode. Yes, chapter one, The Drivers. All right. So we're going to find out. A 2004 Doomsday Prophets view of what the 2030s are going to look like. See how well he's doing so far. The decade from, 2030, from 2030 will see a remarkable and dangerous confluence of world events and trends. A spike on the graph paper of life that will influence humanity for good or ill as never before. Combating the worst effects of this will require urgent action informed by the clearest possible understanding of where we are now and where we might go. Such action, this again, remember this was written uh, 16 years ago, I'm sorry, 17 years ago, such action could lead us to a saner, healthier, and safer society. The not-too-distant future, you know, from 2003, could be one of unparalleled peace, prosperity, and general well-being. The knowledge and resources for this are in place, or can be seen not too far away. Yes. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The world's population may stabilize. But only if the poverty afflicting most humans can be alleviated, then uh, he has this hilarious uh, quote from Bill Clinton in 2001, uh, you know, prophesizing the truly global consciousness heading our way. Yes, even Bill Clinton was questioning whether we have the will, the question is, according to Bill Clinton in 2001, 
whether we have the will to uh, make the 21st century truly global consciousness. All right. <clears throat> that hope, Bill Clinton's hope, is unlikely to be realized by 2030, no matter what we do. But if effective social and economic reform can be started now, you know, uh, 16 years ago, we could see a peaceful and productive transition to a new society. Yes. Uh, okay, but let's get back to planet reality. Or, or, after we've gone through uh, that knee slapper, or the near future could be bad enough to kill tens of millions of people in a variety of terrible ways, even plunge us into a global dark age and damage the very foundations of life, which could take centuries to repair. The harbingers of these disasters are already with us, you know, 17 years ago. As I write these words, an ugly and costly war is smoldering in the Middle East. 20 million people are facing starvation in Africa. A nuclear war has been narrowly averted on the Indian subcontinent, while the warnings of severe water shortages and ecological damage are becoming more urgent. So there is a clear need to choose to establish the courses of action that would contribute to one outcome or the other. And those informed choices will have to be made quickly 17 years ago. Yes, where, of course, every single thing he's talking about uh, has gone exactly uh, as you could expect. Uh, there is considerable evidence for the 2030 spike, the combined effect of at least six adverse drivers. The most reliable estimates set readily available oil resources at a little under a trillion barrels and world consumption at 28 barrels per year indicating exhaustion in 34 years of it. So 2037. 2037. Uh, but of course this was all written before fracking. Predicted increases and oil use would reduce this time sustainability. This will have major and unexpected consequences, not least a significant cut in world food supplies for a population that will grow to 8 billion by that time. Yes, 8 billion. Uh, we're probably going to hit 8 billion in the next year. We're, we, I think we're probably already there. So in 20, so seven, so in 2003, he was saying we will probably hit uh, 8 billion people by the 2030s when we are this far shy of it in the opening of the 2020s. Uh, okay. Con continued nuclear proliferation, policy changes in the use of atomic weapons in the U.S. and Russia, confrontation in the Middle East and South Asia, and political pressures from the drivers make a nuclear war of unpredictable intensity only too possible within 20 years. Okay. The consequences of this would seriously aggregate, aggravate greenhouse effects due to become significant by 2030. The war against terror, the growing tension between Islam and the West, the doctrine that nuclear weapons can safely be used in a limited way 
all of these will tend to aggravate the effect of the drivers. So what were some more of these predictions 17 years ago? The International Water Management Institute predicts that a billion people, a billion people will face an absolute water shortage by 2025. I'm having a, uh, a reading to my uh, predicting the collapse of a planet in the year 2030. Are you interested in this subject? Sounds pretty interesting to me. All right, we have the next door neighbor. He is joining in on this sermon about, uh, okay, you can break in anywhere here, Valentine, if, if you want to. Th th this is my next door neighbor, guys. <clears throat> the no. International Water Management Institute predicts, this was written in 2003, that a billion people will face an absolute water shortage by 2025. The UN warns of wars over the use of the world's rivers by the year 2032. Problems of soil degradation, desert spread, and salinization already considerable will be out of control by 2030 in much of the world. We're going to be working on a heater while uh, while we're preaching as the winter sets in. Okay. Uh, unless these threats are recognized and effectively countered, we risk famine and deaths counted in the millions. Recent research into climate trends warns that severe global warming associated with carbon releases from the Amazon rainforest and from methane hydrates in the Arctic is possible by 2030 with perhaps catastrophic effects by 2050. What do you think so far, Valentine? What? About the collapse of a planet by 2030. Oh, smile man told me 2022. 2022? Yes, what year did he say that? Back in the 70s. Back in the 70s. Your old man was predicting the collapse of the planet. And yes. Man, I should just be talking to this man. I shouldn't be I shouldn't be ta reading this. I should be talking to my next door neighbor. That sounds pretty. I think his old man might have been right. Book of Revelations. There you go. Okay, even global warming and sea level rises on a much lesser scale would it adversely affect agricultural mm -hmm. land in developing in countries. Mm -hmm. This is the temperature. This is the temperature. Failure to redress oh, the poverty warm most warm. humans live in. What is it right now? You got a thermometer? And what an almost cellular? total lack of oh, political control over globalization. Okay are likely to increase economic disproportion and the conflict it causes. Populations will increase most rapidly in the poorest countries with the West containing no more than 15% of the world's people by 2030. I think that stops flashing. There you go. Most people no, are no, aware no. of some of the facts surrounding some of these issues. It sounds like you're aware of some of these facts surrounding some of these issues. Huh? Are you aware of some of these facts surrounding some of these issues? Yes. All right. Man. I'm just learning them myself. I. Right. However, because the drivers gain force by the simple fact of their interaction, their coincidence presents unique dangers. Yes, uh, the major cumulative effect of the drivers, if they are permitted to peak, will be within the lifetime of most of us, certainly within that of our children. Can we avert it or at least soften its impact? It's going to cook you up, brother. Okay, no, We're trying to get some heat in this room since we can't get the pilot on our furnace lit till Wednesday. Can we avert disaster or at least soften its impact? 
this is feasible, but only as a result of fundamental change in human life and society beginning now. Unfortunately, there is too little evidence that these dangers have been recognized. So, who will make the necessary decisions? Yes. Judging by the available demonstrable facts, governments, political hierarchies, think tanks, dictators, and military juntas are mostly saying and doing the wrong things. Are they going to predict Donald Trump here in 2003? Uh, those new holders of power, the multinational corporations, could play a crucial role simply because they are global and so big. But to be useful, including to themselves, their perception of the dangers of the near future must become clearer their accountability guaranteed and their influence more responsible. Okay, Valentine, are we going to see more responsibility from the global, multinational global corporations? No, probably going to see more trouble. There you go. <laughs> see, this man, this man right here. Uh, all right. For the first time in history, the means are emerging for individuals to collectively influence the necessary decisions using two potent tools, <coughs> the internet and spending power. Yes, we will see about that. Uh, vote, voting with your paycheck. Uh, but such pressure needs to be well informed by a reliable assessment of the state of the world and an agenda of reasonable priorities for action. Yes. Uh, what follows then is an attempt to distill from the formidable range of information available and then off and the often wildly conflicting information coming from dozens of think tanks, a broad picture of the world as it is, uh, and courses of action that might logically be deduced from this. To quote Woody Allen, do not underestimate the power of distraction to keep our minds off the truth of our situation. Close quote. Elements of distraction exist in our world as never before. And this was written in 2003, 17 years before the C word. Uh, yes, I can imagine the distractions then. Uh, we all suffer from information overload, which is in itself a distraction. Yes, it is. Uh, Get that little light you had, Alistair. All right. How is the heater coming? All right. Uh, good Lord, this sermon goes on and on. Uh, if an interest group, be it students, worker, workers, Balinese, or capitalists, see themselves as threatened by change, they will fight it. Much of the lack of progress in solving obvious and urgent world problems can be traced back to a lack of recognition of this fact. So important and self-evident is this that I believe it ranks as one of two axioms upon the which much of the of argument style. of this it's book is based. We may state axiom one. Axiom There's one is useful change work. is likely to Maybe come only if that it can it. provide as demonstrable equal okay, and general story. benefit as possible that's to all. the community in which it is planned. How are we doing? Maybe you got heat, baby. Do we have heat? 
Have you got heat like this? All right. Regrettably, much of the recent debate about our future has been confrontational and extreme. And then, of course, they compare the limits of growth to, uh, you know, we, we hear the, the two sides of the story. Uh, um, um, you know, that nobody is ever going to stop swinging over this. Uh, you want to take that coat off, dude. Okay. All right, what is axiom two? If proposed solutions do not take the lowest common denominator of human nature realistically into account, they will not work. Do you agree with that? What was that again? All right. If proposed solutions, okay, to all of the problems facing this planet do not take the lowest common denominators of human nature realistically into account, they will not work. Oh, you got to take human nature into account. Yes, you do have to take yes, human nature. Absolutely. Uh, and the lowest common denominator of human nature. We've already proved it. Uh, yes. One of the main springs of human effort is self-interest. It cannot be argued away or ignored. In the words of pioneer economist Adam Smith, it is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard for their own interest. Thank you, Adam Smith. Uh, yes. I think we read about that in Atlas Shrugged. Yes, this book is not in the business of doomsaying. Its purpose is to recognize and define the threats of the near future so that effective action can be mustered against them. Yes. Okay, so he says, letting you know that there will be hopium in this book. And then he breaks all of this down, of course, about the uh, peak oil. Do you believe in peak oil, Valentine? What's peak oil? What's peak oil? That we're, well, I don't know. That we're basically, we're going to run. Are we ever going to run out of oil? Are we going to run out of oil before the planet burns up, or is the planet going to burn up first? No, that's what's going to burn the planet up. There you go. Is the oil in between now and the time it peaks. All right, here's a chapter on population and poverty. Yes, I bet. So anyway, guys, he goes through it all. And uh, then, of course, climate. All of the ways uh, this planet is going to collapse by the 2030s. But it sounds like we got 10 more years. We have 10 more years before, uh... I'm reading the book of Revelations. What's the main revelation we need to know about? Read the book of Revelations. It's Revelation. Revelations. In no, the Bible. There's no S on the end of that word. Oh, it's the book of Revelation. My old man believes so deeply in that. Oh, really? He... he your old man preached the book of Revelation? Yes. All right. So what did he, th so he honestly thought the world was going to end by 2022? Yes, it is. Well, she brother, we're... It did for something. We got about a year and a half, according to your father. Yeah. And my dad's... Is he still alive? No. Oh. So I can't go talk to him. <laughs> I like to, I like I like to talk to your father. Yeah? So he was talking about this in the 1970s, huh? I think that's pretty cool. All right, but oh, I think my camera turned off about five minutes ago. But I'm off to Florida tomorrow, guys. So I will have to talk.